what does a UX designer do? In order to answer this question, I'm going to show you two screens. Take your time, pause your video, and look at these screens carefully. One of these screens was done by a UX designer. In order to evaluate which of these screens was done by a UX designer, it's first important to understand what the goal of the screen is. So the primary goal of this screen is to help customers discover trains to their preferred destination. The second part of the goal is to ensure that the customers are able to compare which of these trains best matches their requirements. Then the customer would like to check for availability and see if, they, if it is available on the day that they want to choose and finally make a purchase. Let us now see which of these screens achieve these goals. So now let's go back to the two screens. So what you see on that screen is a little, little dotted line that indicates where the screen ends. So you cannot read beyond that screen without scrolling. When you look at screen B, you notice that more than half of the real estate is taken by different search options. Clearly, searching is not important at this point because the user wants to look at the results and modifying the search results is probably not high on their priority. When you look at screen A, you see the user immediately sees a list of trains that, that might potentially meet their requirements. When it comes to comparison, the customer wants to compare all the different trains to see which one of them best matches their requirement. At this point, the customer is most likely thinking about, hey, when is the train departing? What is the duration of my trip? Potentially, what is the availability? And what is the cost? So when you look at screen A, it is very cleanly laid out and it's very easy for somebody to read left to right and consume the appropriate information in the same order that it's presented. However, when you go to screen B, the challenge here is there are a lot of competing elements. Even though it has all the same information, the order is slightly off. Additionally, the challenge is that when you see so many buttons and elements that are all competing for attention, it becomes harder for a user to decide where to look. The third goal of the user is to very quickly determine the availability of their preferred train. When you look between the two screens, Screen A allows you to tell what is available based on the colors, and not just that, based on the information. So just by looking at the shape of the information that's presented, somebody could probably tell you which of these trains are available and which are not. Whereas when you look at Screen B, all the information is presented exactly the same way, and it's much harder to determine which of those trains is available and which is not. And finally, when it comes to making a purchase, it is important to realize that most customers will make a decision based on multiple factors, including availability, including when a train departs, the duration of the trip, and only then will they make a decision. And it's also important to realize that they will only purchase one of those trips out of all the results that have been presented to them. So when you look at screen A, it is clearly arranged in the order that the user wants to do. And so the purchase button is present, but it is not a distraction. It is allowing the user to make a decision first and then make a purchase decision. However, when you look at screen B, the challenge here is all the buttons are designed like primary action buttons. Each one of them is calling for your attention. It does not respect the user's need to make a decision prior to making a purchase. And so finally, if you were to evaluate how well each of the screens did when compared to for each of the goals that we thought about, you would realize very quickly that screen A solved each of these problems in a clean and systematic manner, whereas screen B, while it seemed visually interesting, did not achieve the same goal. And this is the crux of what a UX designer does. It's not just about making a screen look beautiful, it's also about understanding user needs and making sure they're met. 
It's about understanding what the business outcomes are and ensuring that the business is able to achieve its targets. And finally, it's also about understanding the fact that users might use this screen on multiple devices for multiple you know, intentions and you are supporting the user in all of these use cases and this is what is called planning for scalability. Now that you know what a UX designer does, in the next few videos, I'm going to talk about how you can build a career, a rock star career in UX design. I'm also going to tell you, share with you tips and tricks on how to accelerate your learning and your growth in the discipline.